Amen. Welcome to Aaron and Her Missionaries. I'm going to call us church because we are one. Amen. Amen. And we gather in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is our Sunday School Adult Bible Study, an interactive study. And we're going through the book of Titus and we're made it down to verse 4. Still the introductory verses of uh, the book of Titus. Now, verse 4 says to Titus, My own son after the common faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Father, we ask the blessing of the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and the application of your word to our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, now, when he says to Titus, this is Paul writing a letter to Titus. Uh, he says, uh, mine own son after the common faith. What do you think he means by that? What do you think he means by calling him his son? And what do you think he means by, because we know Paul wasn't married. Uh, what do you think he means by calling the faith common? He thought Titus, I mean, Titus was like, Paul was like his mentor. Paul was Titus' mentor? Yes, absolutely. It, it goes a little deeper than that, I would, I would think, but that's, that's a great answer. Mentor covers a lot. Uh, anybody else? I think he won the Lord, really. Most people believe that, that he was probably the one that won Titus to the Lord. Which, you know, because son has almost the, uh, or has the implications of one that gives, you know, is responsible for the birth, right? It's kind of like you and Edward, you claim him as your son. Yes. Yes, and I'm going to say it here in a few minutes, but I was saving it a little bit. I was building up to it, but y'all, that's good, y'all are ahead. So, but no, what's, what's, what is he saying that Titus is my son, and he says, after the common faith? What is, is he saying that Christianity is common? Is it like, like an everyday, you know, just, just an everyday kind of a thing? Is it just common? So but they have in common. It's a, it's a kinship of sorts. Mm -hmm. It's a fraternity of sorts. Yes. Amen. Debbie, was you going to say something different? I don't know because I didn't, I didn't hear He's it. saying that they have, Paul and Titus have that in common, Christianity. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. So there's nothing common about our faith except that it's common to us. It's what we have in common. And it's amazing to me that, that how that the Holy Spirit will let you know pretty quick when you meet somebody new mm -hmm. and you get to talking to them whether they have the Holy Spirit in them or not. Now, I have known people that I think probably learned how to talk it, yeah. but they never had really got it, you know, but or got him, okay? Right. So, here is here uh, Titus, and, and Paul is bragging on him, you know. Uh, of course, Titus is the leader of the church, the pastor, so he's He's got reason, you know, to be pleased uh, because I, I have always in my uh, walk with the Lord, I've always had somebody in my life that God had sent me to mentor, to help, to teach, to be an example to, uh, probably because I'm a preacher and, and a pastor, but uh, I think that that's something that all of us ought to do in one way or another is whoever's around us, right? Be a good example, say the right things, go to the right places, right? Pray, read the Bible, witness to them every chance you got. Uh, so here we have, uh, what, I, what, what I have today is, is I have Kenny, who was uh, my main, my main, uh, I don't know if I won you to the Lord or not. Was you saved when I first come? Yeah. To, okay. But we took to each other. He was just a kid, and I really was. I was in my early 20s, and uh, I, Kenny had a, uh, a faith that was 100%. He was all out for God, and we were tight. We were tight, and, uh, and I watched him grow, and I watched him learn, and uh, seen him do great things, seen him preach, heard him preach. And uh, uh, every time we went on visitation, I believe you'd come alive, wouldn't you? You'd go out on visitation, different things like that. He was always there, always ready to work. And there's a, there's a great 
there's a great satisfaction to a person who has somebody like that in their life when you see that you're influencing them. And now Edward has come and, and Edward was one of those guys that uh, he was kind of like a fly. He just wouldn't go away. He just kept coming back and coming back and coming back. But he didn't irritate me. He was a good fly. Amen. And because uh, I've learned over the years that you can't make somebody receive what you're trying to give them. You see, and I think that's that's one of the biggest reasons we don't try to mentor people more often is because they don't want to be mentored, right? But Edward kept coming back because he's seen something in me that he fed from. He fed from God through me, and he wanted what I had, right? And that, that'll make you just want more, so you have more to give that person. And I've watched Edward grow, and he's helped me grow, amen? It's, so good to have Kenny back, and I'm looking so forward to see what develops out of all this. So uh, be looking for somebody that you can mentor, uh, and because after all these years, Kenny's faith remains. Mm -hmm. You see, and that, that's how you know that you gave them the real thing, is because they still are going strong. Amen. Mm -hmm. Churches you planted are still going. People still getting saved, right? Because you didn't build your name, you built the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And that is the work that will remain. All right, so look at the second part of that verse. He says, uh, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. What is involved? What is involved in this? How is he offering Titus, his son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace? Wouldn't it be that this is a prayer? Because he's saying, look, it comes from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't that how we pray? Jesus said when you pray, pray to the Heavenly Father. And later on in the scriptures, pray in Jesus' name. So, it's Paul's prayer. It's what I believe he's saying. It's my prayer that God, the Father, give you grace, mercy, and peace. One thing that I would call out to you, anytime that you see Paul giving this greeting, it always starts with grace. Without grace, you can't have mercy. Without grace and then mercy, Brother Gary, you can't have peace. Amen. And it's one thing to have it. It's another thing to know you have it. Right? Now, a lot of Christians don't know or, or really have not comprehended enough of what's been given to them through the free gift of salvation to enjoy grace. To let it sink in. I've been saved. I've been saved from the penalty of sin. And I'm being saved from the practice of sin. And one day I'll be saved from the very presence of sin, right? So just knowing that, that you've forgiven of your sins and then every day mercy, right? And then you can have peace no matter what else is going on. This life is so temporary. Listen, when you get to my age, there's funerals all the time. Uh, and a lot of them that you don't know about, people, you're my age, I'm 64, and people that I knew and grew up with are dropping like flies every which way. So it just tells me that it won't be long before it's my turn. Amen? So I'm trying to do everything I can for the Lord every minute that I can do it while I've got a chance. So he's, he's praying these things. And now, ain't that a wonderful thing to say to somebody? Get, what? What is it, Kenny? Well... You look at it, he prays, he prays for Titus to have it. Uh huh. So, what if he prays for Titus to have it to give it away? Pray for Titus, Titus to have it just to give it away. Amen. One thing I, that's, he, he, what he said was, um, what if he's praying for Titus to have it just to give it away? Mm -hmm. And what you'll find, what you'll find is anything that God gives you is for you to give to somebody else. When he gifts you, is so that you'll give. That's why he wants us to come together as a group like this, so that we can give our gifts, the gifts and talents that he's given us, and our love for each other, right? So 
I'm glad that you all seen this church in place way before I did. Amen. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's important. And like I said, everything that God gives us, and that's that's exactly where I was going, Kenny. What what we ought, what we ought to be getting from this right here is we want to be like Paul. We want to have a Titus, somebody that we're pouring into, right? And but we also want to let people know that we're praying for them to have grace. We're praying for them to have mercy and peace. Amen. So that's a great way to talk to people and witness to people. But look at these verses here. Uh, Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 and 23. One of my favorite verses. Lamentations 3 verses 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Satan would kill us right now if he could. And it's only because of God's mercy, not because we deserve it, but because Christ deserves it. Amen? Amen? And it's because of His mercy that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. What a promise. Don't you feel sorry for anybody that's not a born-again, blood-bought child of God that don't have those promises? Yep. Now look here. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I always look at waking up every morning as a new start. How can I be better today than I was yesterday? Amen? Amen. And with God's mercy that is new every Can't wear them out. There's a new mercy for every day. Amen? You can't use them up. New mercy for every day. I thought for sure after I've been saved two or three years I've been using up God's grace and mercy. But thank God it's bottomless. Amen? Now look at 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from some of our righteousness. All. All unrighteousness. Praise God. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace. Grace, mercy, and peace. We all need it. Grace, grace is uh, giving us what we don't deserve. Amen. The gift of salvation. Mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. And if we don't have grace and mercy operating in our lives, we have no peace. Listen, if you're here and you've never been born again, if you've never repented of your sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you've not really tasted grace for yourself and felt that cleansing that takes place. Amen. Now, I'll say this real quick. When the priest... When the priest would go, I don't know if I'm getting into my next message or what, but it, it feels right to say it here. When the priest would uh, go on, uh, they would go in rotation to work in the temple, right? They'd have, and they'd go in for several weeks or however long that it was that they would go serve. But whenever they started the priesthood, they would have an overall bath. They would go to the brazen labor. And they would take all their clothes off and they would wash all over in the brazen labor out in the outer court. You see, when you first come in was the brazen altar where the sacrifices were. And then there was that daily, you see, that's what that labor is for, that daily, that overall bath. But then before you could go into the holy place, you had to have that daily bath, that daily washing. Because you get dirty. We get dirty in this world. And, and God said, every day you need to repent. Every day you need to align yourself with my thinking. And rely, align yourself with my word. And when I say it's wrong, then it's wrong. When I say it's right, then it's right. Repent and ask the Lord to wash you. He cleanses you. And the blood of Jesus just follows you around. Every time you sin, a drop of blood is falling on your heart, your soul, into your account. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, that's as far as we'll go today, and we'll try to pick up verse 5 next week. God bless you. Thanks for joining us.